I have two products from the company Lugu that I want to share with you today. This is a fleece lined blanket and this is an insulated poncho. If you're interested, keep watching. Now just before we get started, I do want to thank Lugu who reached out to me and offered to send these two products for me, to me. And I've had them for quite a bit of time. In fact, I've had them probably six months, but it just didn't seem to make a lot of sense to test them over the summer. So I did wait into the fall until now to test them out. And I think that was uh, a good choice because the more I think about them, they're ideally suited to anybody who's looking for some warmth while they're out hunting because they both have uh, not a woodland camouflage, but well, you'll see the camouflage when I get it on. All right, so that's the backstory. So what I thought I'd do is I'll start with the blanket. I'll get it out of its bag. I'll talk a bit about its materials and its size and its construction. I'll talk a little about my experience using it and then we'll move on to the poncho. All right, so we are going to start out with the blanket. And just before I begin, I want to mention that the links to where you can take another look at each of these products will be in the video description as well as the specifications for each of them in case you're interested in. So the blanket, I took it out of its stuff sack. Uh, the Total package weight of this is two pounds, five ounces. All right, so the bag itself is just a nice nylon material. It does have a PVC coating on the inside, so the bag is should be waterproof. Maybe the seam's not, but the bag itself is pretty much waterproof. So I've taken the blanket out. Now, just a few things on it. Size-wise, its measurements in Imperial are 78 on the length of it and 55 on the width of it. I'll give the metric in the video description as well. It is a nylon type material on the outside and a micro fleece on the inside. Now the fleece, for those of you who are interested, is what's known as 250 GSM, standing for grams per square meter. So not a really heavy fleece, but I'll tell you, well, I don't know how well this will show up. It's a nice, fine micro fleece. It seems to be fairly uh, woven tightly and it, it feels really good. It does it that. Now the, I'm going to drape it over my shoulders in a second so that you can get a better idea of the pattern of the camel on this. It's like an oak leaf type of uh, camel. Um, the company rates this as being waterproof. Fortunately, it is not waterproof, and I say that for a reason. So I took it outdoors, I threw it over one of my lawn chairs, I sprayed it with the garden hose, and yes, water did go through it. Not easily, not quickly, certainly heavily water resistant, but not waterproof. And that's important because, honestly, I don't think I want my blankets to be waterproof, unless you're just laying on the ground. But if you're wrapping up in these and it's waterproof, it also means it's not going to breathe. So you will get wet from wearing this over you if it doesn't breathe. So let me see if I can't figure out the best way to throw this over my shoulders. Where's the long side? Like this. All right. Now, I'm just kind of throwing it over my shoulders so that I can demonstrate the pattern the best I can. Probably walk up into the woods up here, right, and disappear. So you can see it has a nice a oak leaf pattern on it. So yeah, very nice for hunting, I would think, uh, camping, and if you're looking for something a little low profile, it is nice and warm. I mean, you can wrap up in this and stay quite warm with it. It's just a simple blanket. That's what I want to say about it. There is no attachment points, no grommets, no snaps, no loops on it at all. Would have been nice to have had some loops on the corners so that you could not so much use it as a tarp, but maybe use this in conjunction with a sleeping bag or something to get a little extra warmth over or something to help you wrap it around and keep it around your neck like a poncho style or a cape style. If you're interested in ways of doing that, I do have a video on how to use a blanket, regardless if it's a wool blanket or a synthetic blanket or a down blanket. So, you know, a number of different hacks and tricks if you're interested. I'll put that video in the uh, video description if you're interested in having a look at that as well. Yeah, so just a simple blanket. Probably the best thing about this blanket I'll have to say is that the price, $30 on Amazon. Not bad. For the blanket of this quality, I will say that it is a good value. It's not a high-end blanket by any means, but it's not an expensive blanket either. So $30. All right, let me grab the poncho. So this is the poncho. Now, just before I get into describing the poncho itself, the stuff sack that it came in does have a waterproof coating on the inside. It is a compression sack so that you can use the straps to bring this down to a smaller size 
not a great deal smaller than I had it, but a little bit smaller so to pack it away. The weight of the, the poncho in the bag comes in at two pounds, seven ounces. And like all ponchos, you can unsnap this and use it as a blanket. And the size of that in this case will be 75 by 55. So just a little bit smaller than the other one. I do, there are a few features on this that are kind of unique. I'm kind of going through the basic things first. So the, it is a quilted polyester on the inside and you'll probably note that looks very much like a, a wooby does. The blanket or the poncho liners that are virtually blankets and can turn a poncho into a sleeping bag or whatever. And that's what it feels like. It feels very much like a wooby in design, but it is a full poncho. Now again, um, Lugu says that this is waterproof and again it is not. It is very water resistant, but I tested it the same way. I did the blanket and found that it would wet through with a lot of rain. But what's nice about it, again, uh, as a waterproof item, um, I don't think I want it to be, but if I am looking for waterproofness, wear it underneath a poncho. That's exactly what makes this great. It's like a properly designed poncho liner that you can wear on its own just the way it is or throw on a fully waterproof poncho on top of it and give it that much greater versatility, warmth, water protection, take you later into the year, whatever. Same camouflage pattern on it. It does have a kangaroo pocket on the front, keep your hands warm. It's deep enough that you can put things inside of it that are not likely to follow, but there are no closures, no zippers or anything in here. Really what this is designed to do the best is for, I think, uh, tree stand hunting or still hunting. If you're next to a tree, you're all hunkered down and you want to stay warm and have the camouflage pattern on, this will certainly provide that for you. You can you know, bring your arms and everything right inside for a little extra warmth. Now it has a few more features that I want to show you, but in order to do that, I'll first have to take the poncho off. Let's start at the hood. So as you might expect, drosting around the outside of the hood with cord locks so that you can pull it nice and snug around your face. Just below the neck or just below your chin, there is a dome snap which will give it a little more, more tightness uh, if you're looking for that around there. Honestly, nah, it's a bit too tight for me, but you know, you may find it comfortable to use it that way. And there's actually two dome snaps or two one of the sides. So you can, there's adjustments, I guess we'll say two point adjustment for the dome snaps there. They are plastic dome snaps, by the way. Now, down the sides, as you might expect with a poncho, the camouflage makes it a little challenging to find everything I'm looking for. So, right, there we are. Down the sides, there are two more dome snaps. Let me just undo one here. So they are the plastic type dome snaps. They have enough tension to hold it together. I have no fear of them ripping out. It's not, not like they're gonna come under that much torque on them. So they would hold it together like that. And otherwise you can undo it and open it up fully to use it as a blanket. At the base, it has another drawstring. Find that. This is on the back flap so that you can pull it shut while you're wearing it. But there's another reason for having that here and a cord lock to snug it in around your butt and area there. Now, down the sides, there is a zipper. Open this up, I'll just show you the zipper, but I'll reconfigure the bag in a second. This zipper runs the full length of the poncho and allows you to use it as a sleeping bag. So let me just con uh, reconfigure this bag into a sleeping bag or this poncho into a sleeping bag to show you how that works. All right, I've reconfigured the poncho into a sleeping bag. In order to do that, unsnap the sides and then run the zippers together like you would any sleeping bag. They are two-way zippers so they can be pulled from either end. They also have tabs on the inside and the outside so that if you can use it like a sleeping bag and run the zippers up and down with your arms from the inside. Um, it here, Here's the thing though, it's open on both ends, right? So this is intended to be the head end and this end is intended to be the foot end. Now you remember that cord lock I mentioned that went around the butt or the back part of the poncho? This is where the cord lock is. So in order to turn this into a sleeping bag, you would pull the cord lock, bunch it up, and that's what closes the end of the bag so that you can get downside of it and that's where your feet would be as at this end of it. Okay, uh, I tried this. Now, you'll have to appreciate I'm 5'10", 
I'm about 180 pounds. So I'd like to say I'm a little round average, we'll say. So I'm not an especially big person, but I'm not tiny either. This bag was way too small. Remember the initial measurements I gave you, 75 inches in length, 55 inches in width. When I pulled that tight around my feet, I have reduced the length of the bag considerably. In fact, it barely touches my shoulders. You know, I would really have to scrunch down the side of it to uh, use it and you know, keep it up around my face or my neck. And there is no drawstring at the top, so you can't use it to snug in around yourself uh, unless you wanted to use this end to snug in around yourself and have it wide open at your feet. That, I suppose, is another way of using it. The other thing is, it was 55 inches when we started. When you fold that over and zip it up, you're now down to, what is that, 27.5 inches in width? That's not very wide, right? That's, that's the width of it. So it was just way too small for me to use as a sleeping bag. But the option is there. I think it's much better if you're looking for something to sleep in. It's just wear it like a poncho, throw another uh, fully waterproof poncho over top of that, and wear it that way. There is one more feature of the poncho that I wanted to show you. In order to do that, I had to put the poncho back on. So it starts with... This is the back corner of the poncho. Grab the two back corners and what you'll find is that the zipper, let me see if I can bring this up close enough, the zipper connection is there so you can start the zippers pulling the back towards the front if that makes sense and turn it into something of a parka pon uh, watch coat I think is another name for it. Pull it up a fair distance. You can't pull it up all the way, but you can get it up a fair distance. So you can see what I've done is I've turned this into a, uh, what, what, yeah, a parka, I guess, is the best way to say it. Because I do have a hood, of course, that I can use. Now the microphone's going to... There, no, I guess the microphone's still up. So yeah, look how much mobility I have now. I am not just a big floppy thing. It's, it's snug to my body. I can walk with it. If I'm carrying a firearm because I'm hunting, I can still use that. And uh, yeah, so it uh, adds a little bit versatility. In fact, I think this is probably a better feature to use the zippers for than it would be to try and use it as a sleeping bag. There's only one comment I would say, though, and that is where the zipper comes together right here. It would be nice if there was a little buckle or snap or something that you could use to keep it together whatever that comfort point is because without it it unzips itself so actually that's not a big deal if you have a nice big blanket pin or something you can bring it up to whatever is comfortable you can't bring it up too high because then you won't have any mobility in your arms but when you get to that comfort point put the uh, pin through to hold it together like that and this works well as a poncho or as a parka. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts. First, the blanket. So very simple, right? It is a micro fleece interior with a polyester. I believe it's polyester. I said nylon earlier, but I believe it is polyester material on the outside. Uh, it is just a nice, simple blanket. It is not waterproof, but it is highly water resistant. And uh, it's nothing special about it, no extra features, but it's still a very good price. I think that's the best thing I can say about it. Now, the poncho. So this has a lot more versatility to it than the blanket itself. The fact that you can open it right up and use it as a blanket, the fact that you can use it as it is as a poncho or add it as, use it as a poncho liner. I will say yes, the versatility is there if you want to set it up as a sleeping bag. It's just I think it's a bit too small for pretty much anybody to use as a sleeping bag. And the fact that you can turn it into a parka by bringing the zipper up and closing it around the middle. Do you know, it reminds me a lot of the Helicontex Swagman roll, but I'm, I'm, that's as far as I'm going to draw the comparison. The Helicontex, although I don't own one, appears to be of a much higher quality with even more features involved with it than this one, but it also carries a considerably higher price than this product does. Okay, so that's pretty much what I wanted to say about these two products. As I mentioned, I'll put the links to where you can take another look at them in the video description. These are budget-minded items. Again, they're not high-end, not expensive, so don't expect it's something that is miraculous. Just expect something that is functional and good value. That's the best I can say for them. All right, get out and explore and take that path, let's travel, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.